kind of watching, though, because this is a real art, you know? And, and this is the man, too. This He's is the, the man. Picasso He's the king. Mixing. He's we're, the king. We're teaching us slow. We're bringing him along slow. And you know what? I haven't learned. Come on, Lars from Metallica. Lars, are you here? Come on out. Back here. Thank Come you. on down. What's up, man? What's up, man? How's it going? Thanks for coming. You gotta say hello to some of your fans who've been here all day, if you don't mind. The guy down there on the horse? Yeah. The, the all guy. right. That's your biggest fan, the guy on the horse. All right. Yeah, they've uh, well, been My name's here for a while. not Carson. Yeah, I don't know about oh. those. Who's I, Carson? I don't know. We have no clue where those came from. He's the next. You need guest Metallica out. tickets? We're not playing any shows. <laughs> <laughs> Lars, right. I don't think they can hear you. What's going on? Very little. Welcome I'm to MTV. I'm just hanging out in New York. Yeah? I'm like, nothing to plug, nothing to talk That's about. That's great. Just here hanging. Let's wrap out. What do you like to do in New York? What do you, you hang? Um, you want to know what I'm really doing here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm here um, supporting my wife, who's here doing some interviews. <laughs> OK, just here hanging out with my wife. She's running around um, doing interviews for, uh, for her med medical residency. So she's out no to kidding. Bellevue and Mount Sinai and all these different hospitals and so on. And what sort of uh, medicine? I get up at 7 in the morning and drive her there. You're That's kidding my me. Role. That's what I do. Thank you. Thank you. Lars, a family yeah. man, devoted husband, and coffee Thank drinker. You. Uh, so what, what kind of medicine is she getting into here? Uh, ER. ER, love yeah, the show. It's a trendy, Rebecca Romain. Trendy thing. Hi. Lars, Lars? Are you the nurse? How are you? I'm fine. On, on what, ER? <laughs> Do I look like a nurse? No, no, no. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm okay. You know, Good. we're from the same neck of the woods. Which Northern is? California. Yeah, I'm from Berkeley. Okay. I was going to say Denmark, because that's where I'm really from. Oh. Mmm. But we live in Northern California. Right. Where are you from? Berkeley. Oh. <laughs> did, did I say that? <laughs> Am I repeating myself? I lived in Berkeley. You did? Uh, yeah, house in North Berkeley on uh, Shasta, 2690 Shasta. Okay. Do you know I, where that is? No, I grew up on Milvia Street. You know where that is? No. I worked at a radio station in San Francisco. <laughs> okay. Right. I rode my Anybody big wheel in the street one time and got busted. Uh, uh, Lars, let's talk about, um, first of all, tell me about uh, the load sessions. And, and let's get through, a lot of people think that uh, reload is sort of um, extra no, it's tracks. Like, well, it's like I'm plugging that. No, but t I tell really us about that. To talk about I know, but tell us a little bit about that. Right? I just came out to say, I was supposed to be here on Monday, as you yeah. probably know, for the big premiere and something happened out in California, so I couldn't come, but load sessions. Um, well, what happened, the short version is we wrote almost 30 songs between late 94 and late 95, and uh, we were going to make a double album, basically. The next album was going to be a double album, and we went into the studio, uh, recorded most of them, actually recorded all of them, and... Um, then we got a chance to do Lollapalooza in the summer of 96, and we realized we couldn't finish all these songs. Well, James couldn't finish 30 sets of lyrics, so we uh, basically divided the sessions into two albums and finished one record, went out and did Lollapalooza and a bunch of other stuff, right. went back yeah. in the studio about a year later and finished it, and then we got two albums out of, of one visit to the songwriting department and to the studio, so Which that was is really nice. cool, yeah. yeah and we got two albums. We got two albums checked off on our contract instead of one. Ah, see, that's nice. <laughs> that's the real like cutting reason, corners. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we want to find out the real <laughs> deal. Don't, don't tell the record company they're sitting in there. <laughs> nah, that's all right. This is a live show. they they got to come in here and get you. Let's check in with the news real quick. And Kurt, Kurt, what's going on? Hi, right, Lars, uh, hey. you get a little statuette over here for being the Kurt, first. Kurt, Kurt, you're not smoking. The first, no, I the, was. Okay. <laughs> first I artist, saw that. The first artist to come on not prom promoting something. I'm that's, trying, I'm trying. I just came by to say hi, man. Try a little harder, okay? <laughs> All right, Pearl Jam will be back on the airwaves tomorrow night at 11 with another installment of the group's Monkey Wrench radio show, broadcast from a secret location with special unannounced guests on hand to join in. The show will essentially be a two-hour rollout of the new Pearl Jam album, Yield, and the show will run at least two hours, although the last Monkey Wrench broadcast three years ago ran for four and a half. One other Seattle ba band note, the Presidents of the United States, whose farewell album Frosting is due out in March, will play their final gig tomorrow night at the Paramount Theater in Seattle. It wasn't the president's breakup that had both Whitney Houston and her husband, singer Bobby Brown, crying in a courtroom in Fort Lauder Lauderdale, Florida on Thursday, however. More likely, it was the drunk driving conviction handed down against Brown in connection with a 1996 auto accident in which he broke four ribs and a foot while speeding in a Porsche that was leased to his wife. Brown was sentenced to five days in jail, 30 days of drug rehab, 100 hours of community service, a $500 fine, and the usual pop star regimen of public service TV spots, although Brown will have to pay to air his if some network doesn't agree to run them free. In other R&B news, rapper Jay-Z will launch a month-long tour in Philadelphia on March 18th, featuring support acts from his own Rockefeller label, among them the duo of Christione and rapper Sauce Money. Jay has also shot a long-form video based on tracks from his current In My Lifetime album, and that'll be out in April. 
And finally, comic Chris Rock has announced that he'll provide financial backing for the establishment of a Harvard Lampoon style humor magazine at Howard University, the Black Oriented School in Washington, D.C. The Lampoon, of course, has funneled writers into such shows as The Simpsons, Seinfeld, and David Letterman. And Rock says he'd like to see more black writers among them. His Howard University magazine, so far untitled, would be a training ground. And while white students would, of course, be also be eligible to work on it, they'll definitely have to be pretty damn funny. Chris Rock himself, by the way, like Ernest Hemingway, Gore Vidal, and any number of other writers, never went to college. His wife, however, is a Howard graduate. Carson? Hey, Kurt, did you ever go to that... Um that Fashionably Loud gig we did a few months ago? I, I, you know, I wish you had been there because they were handing out bouquets of money at the door. <laughs> I, just, I heard you couldn't get in. You know. No, I couldn't get in. That's too bad. Go with your yeah. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a Happy Gilmore thing going yeah, on. Yeah, you know. All right, very good. Well, I just want to see if you, uh, if you uh, had been there because uh, in a few minutes we're going to find out much it's more the about Fashionably Loud, my life, I believe. Right? Mm -hmm. I know. Thank you. Rub it in anymore. Appreciate it. Lars, don't go anywhere. You just, how could I? More of Lars. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Flex, taking us out. He mixed some of uh, Metallica. In this complicated... Cool. I don't. I don't think Flex has ever had a Metallica CD on the one no. or the two. Beginning of a whole new thing for him. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mixing it a whole other level. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Welcome back to no turning Live. back now. Lars Metallica's here. You like to dance? Do you like? Do you go to clubs? Or are you into like any other oh, sorts of music have, at all? What kind of music do you listen to? Um, depends on the mood. But I, I can be persuaded to go dance club. Sure. Yeah. Well, who do you like right now, though? Well, um. I've been listening a lot to a new record. I got it from the record company a couple of days ago called Vast that you guys will get really? You'll be in a couple of months. What's it sound like? It's sort of like um, if you crossed uh, the Prodigy with Enya. No kidding. It's, yeah, wow. I mean, it's really different, believe me. And I just got a copy of it last week, and I've been listening to it like every day. It's really cool. It's got that kind of vibe to it, but it's got a lot of uh, really <laughs> cool um, like vocal, like uh, Irish folk vocals and stuff mm. over it. And it's, this cool guy, it's his debut album, it's called Vast. There, yeah. I plugged something. I know, there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I saw you backstage at Nine Inch Nails at Shoreline Amphitheater. Sure. Tell me about that. Were you into Nine Inch Nails or what was um, that? I'm generally into good music and I think Nine Inch Nails qualifies as good music. Um, so we, you know, David Bowie was playing there too and um, yeah, we're into just checking out what's going on. Um, you know, I think we were in off time, and uh, we can be persuaded to go to gigs like that, sure. What do you think of all the uh, drum sampling that's happening? Does that offend you? <laughs> Very little offends me, believe really? me. <laughs> it means I get more time off <laughs> in the studio. It, um, I think it's fine. I mean, what people want to do with these type of things, and I think any kind of creative progressions or people wanting to take music and, and stuff to different levels and have different, different directions. Yeah, have, have fun with it however way they see fit. It's fine. I'm like the most open-minded guy. You yeah, want to sample it. my drums? <laughs> Go ahead. As long as I, I don't have doors on open. As long as I don't have to be a part of it. You know? Right, definitely. But um, it's fine. The less I have to do, the better. <laughs> Take my job, please. <laughs> We're going to show the video for Unforgiven, too. Maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about this and tell us how it relates, actually, to Unforgiven. A lot of people um, are unclear. Well, obviously, the song itself is uh, it's a continuation of, of the first one from the Black Album from 91. We'd never really written a song that, that tied into a previous song, so that was kind of fun when it came time to do the video. We called Matt back up again, and uh, it's like, Matt, let's, let's do this again. And um, if you're going to ask me what the video is about, I'm the wrong guy. I think there's only one person on this planet that knows it, and that's Matt Mahern. Okay. <laughs> but one day, me and him will sit down and have a couple of beers, and they'll tell me the truth. <laughs> but um, this is the same kid that was, in the, um, that was in the first one. He's five or six years older, and of course. And um, it's us on a sound stage in Van Nuys in the you know, middle of the afternoon. And uh, generally speaking, do you like the video making process? Or? Uh, it, 
I like it. That's probably a stretch, but yeah. it's it's part of what you do, isn't it? I mean, the only thing I, I don't so like I don't about think he likes it. <laughs> the, the only thing I don't like about it is that if they could just tell us when we we're supposed to be there. Okay, here's the call time. Right. It's at 10. Okay, Tony, is that a real 10 or right. is it 11? Right. Okay, so Tony, you know, our guy gets on the job. So 11 o'clock rolls around. Okay, get down there at noon. We bought you two hours, so we get down there at noon. And what happens? Nothing Absolutely happens nothing. till four. Right. Six. Yeah. On a good day, four. And this is, that's the only thing. It sort of disrupts the uh, my my half hour with the New York Times in the morning. Right. But uh, other than that, it's fine. The hardest thing is trying to just remember the songs you uh, recorded the song. In this case, these all these songs were recorded two years ago. So trying to remember a song you recorded two years ago and sit there and, you know, you're supposed to do your homework. Well, you guys rehearse them? Well, you're supposed to listen to it before you go in and remember all the drum fills right, and all right. that. And right. Have you done that? Oh, sure we have. Mm -hmm. And then show up and four o'clock rolls around. Oh my God, how are you doing that drum mm -hmm. fill again? And Hopefully I can remember it. Have, yeah. oh, we'll fix that in the editing process. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very cool. Let's check out the video, Unforgiven 2 from Metallica. Cool. Look at Val Kilmer right there. <laughs> uh, Lars Metallica. Thanks for coming and just hanging. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for not plugging anything. I'll plug anything. Thanks for just chilling. Except for somebody else's album. Yeah, well, you yeah. know. Just slip me a 20 on the Vast, way over. Vast, right? Vast. That's we'll it. We'll make sure Very we cool. hear that. It's great. Definitely. I'll stop by next time my Please wife do. drags me to New York. Bring it with you next time. <laughs> okay. We'll cool. perform like open heart right here. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. All right, Rebecca, what's coming up? What are we doing here? Uh, coming up, we got Sarah O'Hare, who's one of the models in um, Fashionably Loud, and I'll be talking to her about 
the show, Fashionably Loud. It's going to be out on Sunday. Coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.